I'm here with Justin Trudeau, the Liberal MP for Papineau in, in the Montreal area, and Ujal Dosange, who's the Liberal MP for Vancouver South. And it's a rare event to have two political celebrities in the Georgia Strait building at the same time. Um, I'll start by asking Justin Trudeau, you lived in Vancouver for several years, what's it like coming back and what message are you bringing to the people here? Well listen, uh, first of all, it's, it's always a pleasure to be back in Vancouver. I, uh, I'm in my old neighborhood. I used to live in South Granville, uh, uh, just a few blocks from the Georgia Straits, uh, new offices. I would have dropped by had, I, uh, had you been here when I was here. Um, but to be, back, to be here and to be here on a beautiful sunny day uh, is a real treat, obviously. Um, but mostly to be here at a time where I get to talk about my passion for Canada, my passion for this country we're building, uh, my concerns uh, that we're going in the wrong direction, uh, whether it be economically, whether it be how we're caring for our democracy, uh, the concerns that I have that we need to give people that direct boost, uh, whether it be our families or our students or our elders or our new arrivals, uh, so that we can be successful in the coming years and connect that message out to as many Canadians as possible, that we need to wake up, that we need to step up, and that we need to be the country we want to be and we can only do that by replacing Stephen Harper. And Ujal, you only won by 20 votes last time. How's the campaign going right now in Vancouver South? The campaign is going, uh, it's really intense campaign, um, door to door, um, house to house combat, uh, peaceful nonetheless. Um, and uh, I'm working very hard and I'm delighted to have um, Justin join us um, in our campaign. Uh, of course, he uh, brings that passion for Canada and equality uh, and also reminds uh, uh, immigrant communities of um, his father's vision for a Canada, of a just society where everyone was equal. And, um, and we are facing some tough times as a result of the conservative immigration policy where parents and grandparents can't join newcomers for at least 13 or 14 years. And people are actually now thinking back uh, to Mr. Trudeau's days that how lucky we were I came to Canada, and within 18 months of my arrival, I was able to unite with, uh, reunite with my widower father and my two younger sisters. And uh, now it's 14 years, and I think, and uh, and Justin's coming actually highlights the difference between how the Liberals treat newcomers and what we wish for them, and how Conservatives treat them. One of the issues that's um moved to the forefront in recent years has been the uh, arrival of migrant workers and not giving them citizenship and moving more to a European model of workers come here and then they, they're sent home when their work permits expire. What, if anything, would the Liberal Party do differently, Ujol? Well, look, I mean, I, I have been very critical of this government's penchant for increasing the number of foreign workers coming into this country. That's not how you build a great country. Um, you don't allow, you don't bring workers in, exploit them, uh, and then send them back so that they have no stake in health care, in roads, in infrastructure, in the kind of fair and inclusive society we want to build because we are saying to them Canada is just a hotel and a factory for them. And beyond that, they have nothing to do with this country. We, we should be bringing in more permanent residents, more skilled workers as permanent residents, People, ordinary people like myself. I was, you know, a 22-year-old kid, 21-year-old kid from Britain when I came. I really barely had any skills. If I can do in this society can allow me to do the kinds of things I have done in this country, uh, I think that, that, that we need to actually bring ordinary people from right across the world, as we have done in the past, which, have, which has made Canada great. No, I, I agree with, with Ujil, obviously. Um, we need to understand that, yes, there are certain areas uh, where migrant workers are a solution, temporary workers, as long as we're making sure that we're respecting their rights, and as long as we're thinking, okay, when these people return home to their families, to their communities, what are they going to bring back to their home countries as skills that are going to allow them to succeed elsewhere around the world. I mean, if we're simply exploiting these workers uh, and sending them home and not worrying about them anymore, uh, we're missing an opportunity to share some of Canada's success in terms of solutions, in terms of know-how, with the rest of the world. So there's nothing inherently wrong with having uh, you know, temporary migrant workers. It's just building so much of an emphasis on it and, and use pushing it as a replacement for regular immigration that the Conservatives are doing that is a real problem. I'm curious whether the Liberal Party would introduce any legislative changes with regard to migrant workers. 
Well, you know, I, uh, Justin is our immigration critic, but um, when we form government, if we get that privilege, one of the things I'm going to for, um, you know, make sure that we do is actually review the whole immigration system and the legislation, make it fairer, make it make sure that we don't have this overemphasis on temporary workers and reduction of emphasis on permanent residents, and that we treat people fairly when we invite them to this country, and that we deal with uh, the refugees in a humane kind of fashion rather than, you know, punishing women and young children rather than punishing the smugglers that bring them here. I'd like to ask you, Justin, that um, NDP leader Jack Layton, there was a report on the news last night that he's becoming increasingly popular in Quebec. And uh, how are you dealing with the rising popularity of the NDP in Quebec? They've elected, you know, an N MP in Outremont. There's talk that there may be more NDP MPs elected in Quebec. Well, it's interesting as you as you you know talk to the NDP, uh, you know, and ask them questions. Look, the projections are showing you with five seats in Quebec. Can you name those five seats, or can you name three of those five seats? The reality is, other than Ushremo, the, the NDP will not win a single seat in Quebec, and Quebecers know that. Everyone knows that. So the idea of parking their support with the NDP, which is exactly what they're doing, is an expression of reaction against the bloc and a wait and see if the Liberals are really going to step up in the rest of the country before they switch over to the Liberals. Because that's what I'm hearing on the door. That's what I'm hearing on the ground. So I'm not at all worried about this spike. I think it's an actually good thing in Quebec because what it means is people are saying, yeah, no, we definitely want, don't want Mr. Harper. That's clear in Quebec. We definitely uh, are moving away from the bloc. Um, but let's just pick the safe, not going to get elected vote you know, right now for the pollsters while we're looking at uh, this last two weeks of the campaign. So I think it's actually a pretty good sign. Obviously, I'd like them to switch directly to the Liberals so we can all start celebrating, um, but it's going to happen at the end of the campaign. I'd like to ask you, Jean, about the NDP strength in British Columbia, and you, as a former NDP Premier, obviously have some insights into the New Democratic Party. Um, the NDP message is that the Liberals didn't stand up to Stephen Harper when it came to opposing the harmonized sales tax. And I'm wondering how you're responding to that criticism on the doorsteps, if you're hearing it. Well, first of all, you know, I've uh, actually knocked on over a couple of thousand doors um, in the last few days, and I have had uh, HSD brought up as um, twice uh, HSD issue. I think people know there's a provincial referendum, and uh, people are going to speak. I don't think federal politicians should be trying to influence the outcome of a provincial revenue referendum. I think that's just totally wrong. That's not how you, how you deal with the federation that's already fragile enough and complex enough. But the, on the issue of uh, the actual responsibility, I think it's a matter of provincial sovereignty. If the, no matter how unpopular uh, a Campbell government was, if the government came to the federal government and said, look, we want to harmonize the tax with you, you can't say yes to Ontario, yes to Quebec, yes to the Atlantic, but say no to a duly elected government of British Columbia. I think that's not how you work a federation. It's easy for the NDP to raise the issue because they've never been in government, but ultimately I think that we need to make sure that we allow provincial jurisdiction to deal with its own issues without federal interference. When Michael Ignatieff ran for leader of the Liberal Party, he was the first person to come forward and, and call for a carbon tax. In your last federal campaign, a lot of environmentalists were encouraged to see the Liberals bring forward a green shift and uh, some pretty progressive policies for those uh, with concerns about the environment. This time, or since that uh, last election, we've seen Michael Ignatieff make several trips to, Ontario, uh, to Alberta where he's been speaking glowingly about the tar sands. And I'm wondering what, you, what message you would have for people in Vancouver with great concerns about the environment that the Liberals maybe can't be trusted. Well, I think, I think the important thing is to, to underline that perhaps uh, he didn't speak necessarily glowingly about the tar sands, but he spoke responsibly about the tar sands. And the emphasis is on making sure that we are responsible about how we move forward uh, with, uh, with any, any development of, uh, of fossil fuel resources in this country, including um, you know, the Albertan resources. What we have to look at is um, 
shifting the conversation away from that dynamic that conservatives are pushing so hard that we either have to choose what's good for the economy or we have to choose what's good for the environment. That, and there's some, some conflict between the two. What Michael Ignatieff has said repeatedly is the only way to build a strong economy for the future is to be smart about the environment, to be investing in renewables, to be using uh, you know, a, a sensible um, exploitation of uh, the oil sands in Alberta to leverage our search and our discovery of renewables, of better solutions so we can move beyond uh, the, the, you know, the dirty carbon producing fossil fuels. That sort of aspect is extremely important for the Liberal Party and taking uh, aim at one of the big, uh, if not the biggest challenge of our time, which is our environmental uh, uh, crisis, uh, is essential and remains essential for the Liberal Party. And is there anything you'd like to add on the environment, Ujo? I think uh, Michael has also said that we will end the um, the, oil the tax credits for the oil companies uh, and and um, work with the oil companies to make sure that they actually exploit the tar sands uh, more cleanly and more appropriately um, and make the progress that um, that Justin's been talking about. Okay. Well, I've been speaking with Justin Trudeau and Ujal Dosange here at the Georgia Strait, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you,